So uh, over the years, uh, who inspired you to create your tone? And wow, I mean that changes. You know, Eddie Van Halen was a big inspiration because yeah. he made so many non-guitar-like sounds, so creative, and hammer-ons were so beautiful sounding without the percussive pitch, uh, picking. And then, uh, of course, um, um, Tom Morello, very inspirational. Yeah. And then, uh, and then even the Corn guys. You know, we grew up in the well, when we were in band and club bands in the same city of Huntington Beach, and seeing those guys uh, being so um, creative with their tones is just something I've always been into. So, when did you start playing with the corn? I was about a, almost a year ago, coming up on a year, yeah, ten months or so. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, what do you uh, what do you do to create your tone or your sounds? And I mean, I just usually I just uh, I have it's about the track. Um, it's about how any tone sounds in the track. Um, I mean, sometimes I'll sit down with pedals and just turn knobs, and it's the combination of those notes with that tone of the pedal that determines if it's cool or not. And it might inspire you to write a new idea. Oh, you know, this note with this flanger on or whatever is really cool. Um, a lot of times, though, if I'm writing. Um, those kind of parts can be, you, you'll have your foundation, maybe your course and your rhythm and your bass line or whatever, and then those, the, the tones that are the guitar parts that require sound design and tone, uh -huh. I can do those in the track while recording, yeah. like start turning knobs and you see how it sits with everything. Okay. I think that's a very important part is to, uh, I think some, 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 sometimes you see uh, maybe beginners and they'll just make a cool tone and not really think how it fits with the yeah, rest of the it's ensemble. Just it's all about me. You really have to hear what's going on. It's like a symphony. You know, your violins and tuba and everything else that is right place. You know. So what about amps and uh, do you? Okay. Well, with uh, I have I use Marshalls um, on some of the stuff I do with head PE. I use Marshalls, and then um, coming into this uh, position with corn, um, I wanted to basically just I'm. I want to capture the corn sound, and that's yeah. a Mesa Boogie sound. Yeah. That's what Monk, Monkey's using now, and that's what I'm using too, because I just want to come in and stay true to corn. And what I sold like 40 million records, so it's about capturing what they've yeah. perfected, yeah. you know. What about live uh, effects? And uh, well, live um, because um, coming in this job, I wanted to keep it really simple, and I have to do a lot of sound design things. So I went to the G system. Um, in my opinion, there's a lot of effects processors out there and messing with them over the years, they tend to get noisy and the quality of the effects isn't yeah. as good, but TC has always been a really quality product. And so when I wanted to get something that could simply switch my channels and turn on a chorus and a delay and a reverb and a vibrato all the flick of a button, it was, it was uh, the G system. That works really well for me. And then when I want to add stuff to it, it's very easy because I have the loops, and I didn't have to get into building this big giant rig because you know uh, with corn we'll uh, we just played it we played a download festival and the next day we were playing in Prague the gear can't keep up oh, okay. you know so it ha you have to have something that's very easy to transport. Yeah. So do you do you work on developing your tone uh, and your use of effects uh, over the years or do you uh, have you like, uh, do you use the same things as you were on this time? I, I mean, I have favorites. I'm a, I'm a, for me personally, I'll go, I can do a lot with a delay, a whammy, and a wah. Yeah. I just, I can have a yeah. lot of fun with just <laughs> those pitching, and then the wah gives me voicing, and delay lets me do all sorts of yeah. stuff. Um, and then, you know, with um, doing this corn gig, it's taught me a little um, how to branch out a little deeper into like courses and, and vibratos and stuff like that, which is really cool too. Yeah, because okay. I use a lot of that stuff. Did you have any uh, ideas when you wanted to create the tone print, or is it just like, hey, go ahead, um, around with it? I did actually have an idea because there was an old uh, one time I had an old effects unit, and I was sometimes I'll take apart. And I'll have it looping on Pro Tools, and I'll just turn through effects, and just hear. And then sometimes like, whoa, I would have never thought of that. And I had an old one that I lost. I don't even know what it was, and it sounds so cool. So I was, I was kind of hoping. That's why I was playing that high chordal part. It's an old riff I've never used for anything, but I, with the right effects, sounds really cool. So that's kind of what I was going for. And thanks for your help and all that. Yeah. No problem.
do you think uh, that creating a tone print will maybe affect some new ideas or uh, like inspire you to do uh, some new riffs or? Well, yeah, a lot of times a guitarist like myself who likes sound design, it can spark a whole new song if I have a cool tone and then I'll make up a little cool guitar part. Um, it reminds me of, uh, not to compare myself to him <laughs> because I wouldn't do that, but, but Edge, you know, yeah. the Edge with uh, U2. Every part he does is sound design part. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the best part in the world with a bad tone can ruin a song. But with the right tone in there, yeah, it, sure. it makes it incredible, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if we went in there changing Edge's sounds all around, a lot of U2 sounds, songs would not be so cool, yeah. you know? Yeah. But uh, are you the the tweaker guy, or do you just uh, like to keep uh, things simple? Is it like you like uh, all the uh, parameters? Uh, well, that's why the tone print stuff is really cool because uh, now with where music's gone, with people like you know Skrillex on one end, and like uh, even Eddie Van Halen back in the day, or Nine Inch Nails, people who are taking music and sounds to extremes. You're always looking for new ways to find new sounds, you know, and so you could spend endless time buying pedals that have this dynamic range of what oh. they can do, but with these pedals, they obviously you can go a lot oh. more places with them, and so that's great from a creative perspective. The other thing is, too, is, uh, you know, everybody's recording in the box, so you have all these effects that are in Pro Tools, let's say, or Waves plugins, and they have a lot of parameters that you can do that a little boutique pedal can't do. like. A phase 90 by MXR, one knob. Yeah. So it's great pedal, but you're limited. So this gives you a lot more opportunity for creativity and options. Okay. Well, it was uh, nice uh, doing a tour for the video. Yeah, thank you. It's an honor to work with thank TC you. for sure. Thanks.